Hi everyone, my name is Sally, the histology hero, and I'm here to welcome you into the world of epithelial tissues. So, do you ever wonder what lies beneath the surface of your body's protective layer? Let's peel back the curtain and explore the fascinating world of epithelial tissues. One thing to do first is to picture your body as a fortress, fortified by layers of cells forming its sturdy walls. Now, when these cells, you know, are all snugly nestled together, they create a barrier that lines the surfaces of organs, cavities, and the outer layer of your skin. Now, this barrier acts as a protective shield against pathogens, toxins, and physical damage, while also regulating the exchange of substances between the body and its environment. Additionally, epithelial tissues play a crucial role in sensory perception, secretion, and absorption, contributing to the overall homeostasis and bodily function. Epithelial tissues can do a lot. Epithelial cells create a protective layer like our skin, shielding us from harm. They also regulate what goes in and out of our body, such as the lining of our intestines, managing nutrients. Moreover, glands produce helpful substances, all thanks to epithelial tissue. When these cells are grouped together, they form tissues, working collectively to keep us healthy and functioning smooth. Based on the layers of cells, the epithelial tissue or the epithelium can be broken down into two main types. First, we have the simple epithelium. This type is made up of just one layer of cells. It works well in places where things like release, gas exchange, or diffusion need to work well. And then we have the stratified epithelium. This type consists of numerous layers of cells piled on top of each other. It acts as a strong shield and protects areas that are likely to get damaged. The simple epithelium is made up of a single layer of cells that works well for tasks that need to be close together or can be done quickly. This kind of epithelium is flat, scale-like, which makes it good for diffusion and gas exchange, just like the long alveoli. Now, to remember it better, I created a memory aid which is called Flatfish Swim Quickly because it looks like scales and is flat, and the word flat brings back that memory. One thing that comes to mind is the similarity between fish and the alveoli in the lungs that exchange gases. Swim swiftly refers to how well the basic epithelium lets gases move through and trade between cells. Now we have the cuboidal epithelium. On the other hand, this is shaped like a cube, like its name, and is mostly in charge of release and absorption, just like the kidney tubules. Now, just like the previous one, I also created a mnemonic to remember it better. Cube secrets absorbed is one way to remember it. Cube is the formula for cuboidal epithelium. Secretion is one of the main jobs of cuboidal epithelial cells, which is what those word secrets means. Absorbed makes me think of the process of absorbing substances, which is a very important job of the cuboidal epithelium and is similar to the job of the kidney tubules. Comparable to the lining of the intestine, the columnar epithelium has a tall columnar shape and often has a finger-like branches called microvilli that help with absorption. To remember this type of concept, always remember the mnemonic tall towers with microtools. The columnar epithelial tower is what tall towers refers to in this case. Microtools are the finger-like structures on the surface of the columnar epithelial cells that are known as microvilli. This memory aid makes it easy to remember that it has a tall, columnar shape and microvilli, which help with absorption in a way similar to the lining of the intestine. But it doesn't just stop there. Welcome to the world of stratified epithelium. The stratified epithelium is made up of many layers of cells, which protect and support areas that get a lot of wear and tear better. Now, we have the stratified squamous epithelium. This type of epithelium is found in areas subjected to wear and tear, such as the outer layer of the skin, the epidermis, the lining of the mouth, throat, esophagus, and the vagina. To remember this better, here's a mnemonic. Skin so scaly, lips, mouth, and vag area. 
the explanation here is each capitalized word corresponds to a location where you find stratified squamous epithelium, the skin, the esophagus, the oral cavity, the lips, the mouth, and the vaginal area. Now we have its sister. Stratified cuboidal epithelium is found in ducts of sweat glands, mammary glands, and salivary glands. This type of epithelium provides protection and secretion. To remember this, here's a mnemonic again. Sweaty mammary and salivary, they're cute. This mnemonic highlights the locations where you find this type of epithelium, the sweat glands, the mammary glands, and the salivary glands, and the term cube helps to remember the shape of the cells. Now, we have the stratified columnar epithelium. This type of epithelium is less common but can be found in certain regions such as the pharynx, urethra, and some parts of the male reproductive tract. The mnemonic for this is pharynx, urethra, and male tract. PU. The reason is the mnemonic helps remember the locations where you find the stratified columnar epithelium, wherein it is in the pharynx, urethra, and the parts of the male reproductive tract. PU sounds like pharynx and urethra and emphasizes the urinary system. Transitional epithelium is also known as urethelium. Transitional epithelium lines the urinary bladder, ureters, and parts of the urethra. It is specialized to stretch and accommodate changes in volume of the organ it lines. To remember this, remember the mnemonic bladder, ureter, urethra, BU. The mnemonic emphasizes the locations where transitional epithelium is found, bladder, ureter, and urethra. BU sounds like bladder and ureter and directs attention to these parts of the urinary system. Now, there is what we call as the pseudostratified epithelium. It is found in the respiratory tract like the nasal cavity, trachea, and bronchi, and it appears stratified due to the varying cell heights but is actually single-layered where it is anchored to the basement membrane. It comprises ciliated columnar cells with cilia to move mucus, goblet cells secreting mucus for moisture and protection, and basal cells for regeneration. This tissue plays key roles in respiratory defense, debris remo removal, and air movement. The mnemonic for this is cilia goblet-based tall towers of air trap. This mnemonic highlights the characteristic features of pseudostratified epithelium, cilia for ciliated cells, goblet cells, basal cells, and the tall columnar shape of the cells. Towers of air tract emphasizes its location in the respiratory tract. What are right, right? But to sum it up, epithelial tissues play critical roles in the body's protection and function. The simple squamous epithelium comprises of a single layer of flattened cells aids in diffusion and filtration, while simple cuboidal and simple columnar has cube-shaped and tall cells respectively, which contributes to secretion and absorption in organs like the kidney and gastrointestinal tract. Transitioning to stratified squamous epithelium, characterized by multiple layers of flat cells, provides protection in areas subjected to mechanical stress, such as the skin and the oral cavity. Each type of epithelial tissue is specialized for specific functions, ensuring the integrity and function of various organ systems. Wait, before I end this video, I would like to leave this one for you to practice. If you really, really learn and listen to this lesson, I want you to take just 5 minutes of your time to identify which type of tissue is present in the following images. You can pause and take a screenshot. It has been fun learning with you. But Sally, the histology hero, has to do some rescuing in other body parts. But for now, thank you for watching!